Hi, Odyssey Camper here. I finally got the bed frame in place, but before we go there, let me go back to the beginning and show you how I got started. The first thing I did is grab some five gallon buckets and some two by twos, just to visualize how wide I could make the bed in the van. I already knew how long I could fit, but I wanted to see how I could maximize the space. For the frame, I decided on two by twos rather than two by fours. I want the bed to be light enough that I can lift it out of the van by myself. Initially, I was going to hang it from the ceiling, but after looking at the way the struts were set up in the ceiling, I could not figure out a way to do that that was practical. Next, I added a center strut for a little more support. I figure if this will hold me, it should hold just about anybody else. And then I added some corner bracing. Also, you'll notice on the left is small board that goes across the entire width of the bed, and that's where I'll mount the inverter and the charge controller. For the top, I went with 2 inch by 3 quarter inch pine boards. Now you can buy these boards at Home Depot and cut them yourself, but I figured since they're sold as bed slats online, I could buy a set and it would already be finished for me. I'll put a link down below on the set I bought, but when I got them, it turned out that the edges were still a little rough and they still needed finished sanding, so six one, half dozen of another, I guess I saved the trouble of making a few cuts, but for $45, I didn't think they represented a, a spectacular deal. For the spacing on the slats, I simply took a spare slat and stuck it in between as I screwed these down to the frame. If you're lighter than me, you could probably get away with the wider spacing. I got the bed frame in today. It probably looks oddly shaped in the video, and it's because I'm trying to maximize all the space. So I've got the slats going over to the edge of the van, and over there where it looks like they're hanging out the door, they actually line up with the slider. And then I need some space up there to sit in the chair so it's a little narrower where my feet go and then wider toward the back where I'm wider <laughs> and next to it will be two five gallon water tanks and then a little storage forward of that bought a couple of new toys I found a fan that uh, fits in a six inch hole it's probably not going to flow as much as a 14 inch fan but at least I won't have to cut into the supports now right around the side of the support here where it attaches to the roof you have to cut to put a 14 inch in there and I didn't want to compromise the rollover strength of the van. So if six inches isn't enough for uh, ventilation, I'll get a second one, put a second one in the back. Also got some LED lights that are going to go up in the ceiling before I put the ceiling panels up. And then, sorry about the noise of the traffic, I live in a busy street. Up front here I've got the power station. So Robert Palmer, a couple guys from Duran Duran. If you get that joke, you're as old as I am. But DC to DC battery charger, uh, that runs off the vehicle power and charges the battery, which is stored behind here in a little cage. And then, of course, solar charge controller. And my 500 watt Bestec pure sign inverter. Here's the contour tracing tool that I used to trace the side of the van onto the edge of the bed. I also used it for the mattress and for the pad that goes underneath. It's comprised of a series of pins and you just push it up against the contour and trace the other side onto whatever you're cutting. Came in very handy. I'm sure a professional uh, carpenter or somebody that lays floor for a living could do that with, do this job without that, but I found it very helpful and it was like 10 bucks, I think. So well worth the money. You'll also notice that along the way I got the carpet in. I'm not doing a video on the carpeting for the walls because I didn't like the way it came out. Uh, it's not really my thing. I had to stretch over some complex curves and I feel that somebody else could do a better job of covering that. Next it was off to the foam factory to get a piece of foam that I could trim to the shape of the bed. You probably have something similar near you even if it's not a foam factory brand. I suggest you go into one of these stores and take a look around. You'll get some ideas. They've got every kind of foam you can imagine. They have pillows. If you look up to the right there's some uh, different formed pillows that you can add to your van. They're relatively inexpensive. They also have polyfill, just about anything you'd want for upholstery. So I settled on a foam that was high density and five inches thick. And I made a couple mistakes here, so let me tell you about them. First, I went with the firmest foam that was available. That was a mistake. <laughs> Thinking that I weighed 250 pounds and I was going to be laying on top of this thing, I thought it would sink in, but as it turns out, I touch in like three places when I lay on my side, my butt, my shoulder, and my ankle. Uh, you just don't sink into the really firm stuff. So when I bought this, I went with what they refer to as the Lux LUXR foam. And to do it again, I'd definitely go with something softer, maybe their uh, HD36 foam, or even their basic poly foam. 
I also wouldn't go five inches. I would probably go with something, I'd probably go with a softer four inch thick foam. And if I did decide to go with the firm foam again, I would go with a three inch, that'd be plenty. I cut this foam mat out to match the lines of the van. I'm kind of planning on using it as a template to cut out the mattress. We'll see how that goes. I got my uh, electric turkey knife all ready to go. I use the black mat that goes under the mattress as a template to trace out onto the foam. You'll notice the edge of the mat's a little rough. I took some sandpaper to that after and cleaned it up. Um, but it's close enough to trace out the mattress and fit it up against the side. To cut the mattress, I used a turkey knife, or electric knife, I guess you call them. And that worked really well. Uh, the trick is to keep it vertical. If you don't keep it vertical, then you get kind of a, uh, a feathering effect at the edges. You can see that right to the right in this cut. That would be a mistake, but I cleaned it up after. Yeah, it fits more or less. I cut a little space over here so I could put my flashlight there and have it handy during the night. Um, otherwise, it fits pretty well. Pretty happy with the results. Electric knife is the way to go for cutting foam. It leaves very little mess, surprisingly. For the house battery, I went with a 100 amp hour gel battery this time. This case is bolted to the floor, sits right behind the driver's seat, up against it. And then the bed frame actually provides additional isolation for it should I get in an accident or something. Uh, the top of the bed frame is reinforced so that it can't go flying around inside. And then this is the panel where all the power connections are made. You're actually looking at the side that goes toward the front of the van. The screws you see coming through the panel are holding on the sign, pure sign inverter, the 20 amp DC to DC battery charger, and the Renogy Wanderer charge controller. I went with this one because it has a setting for a gel battery. Just confirming here that it is in fact charging the battery from the solar panel. Oh yeah, the solar panel. Because I move around a lot, I decided to go with the DC to DC charger this time instead of pure solar. But I still want to have a solar panel along in case I'm out boondocking and not starting the van for a couple days. So this time I went with a 100 watt flexible panel that can be mounted inside the windshield when I'm off hiking or put outside for more efficiency. In case you're wondering, yes it still does charge when it's inside the windshield. As you can see here, it's getting plenty of voltage and... I tried it for a couple days just to make sure it was charging, and I'm sure I'm losing a little efficiency, but it seems to work just fine. The final addition to the power station was a digital voltmeter. I added a 12 volt switch like you would use in a computer case up above it so I can turn it on and off so it's not draining the battery constantly. The LED in the switch serves as a night light, and it's plenty bright, plenty enough to see what you're doing at night in the van. Of course, I also have the illuminated roof, which I'll show in the next video, and that's more than enough illumination for anything. You'll notice there's a little bit of fraying around the holes, but that's going to be covered once I carpet the panel. So the last thing I'll say here is, when you're doing your van build, don't forget why you're doing your van build. The whole point is to get out there, and so with that in mind, I'm going to close off with a couple of clips from my last trip out to Yellowstone. Thanks for watching.
It's impossible to get a good picture of these mountains with an iPhone, so I'll try a video. We'll give a little better representation. <laughs> 